joined now by a uh, four-time Indianapolis 500 champion, Elio Castroneves. This is our content day rolls on here from the Palm Springs Convention Center. AutoNation back on board, Sirius XM. Uh, full-time once again with Meyer Shank Racing, driving the 06 machine. Uh, Honda, of course, uh, on board was the power plant. Uh, and you're back on uh, back on track tomorrow, right? So uh, yes. Looking Finally, forward to it. So I mean, you've been on a track in the last uh, several days, but anyway, right. this is a, no, in, in, in an IndyCar now. In IndyCar, that's right. We're excited to be back. Uh, this is great that we're doing here. Uh, Thermo, haven't been in the track, no idea, but heard great things about it. And, um, well, looking forward to, um, yeah, start back on the, you know, our uh, number 06. Uh, and, um, yeah, start getting getting back uh, to action. Uh, just in general, your thoughts uh, looking ahead to what the possibility is for this year? Yeah, so we have some uh, change of personnel in my group in the 06. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, Dave as uh, our engineer. Also, we have uh, some uh, data people um, uh, as well in the, in the pit stop. So we're going to have some, you know, communication that we got to. That's why it's important two days at least for us to get everybody going. And um, yeah, this is important because uh, we already been one year with Meyer Shank Racing. So putting all the pus uh, pieces and puzzles together, uh, looking forward to a, a great 2023. Questions here for Elio Castroneves, Nate. Uh, Elio, just looking at this year, I think it was kind of late last year and it was a one year deal that you signed to return. Um, how important is this year to kind of maintaining your place in oh, IndyCar. A huge. Um, everyone understand when you're going to, and even that's one year, uh, people think it's a long time, but hey, we're talking about teams that it's been in the, uh, together for a long, long time, years um, of uh, experience and communication and everybody's in sync. So for us, uh, even that we did a 2021, but all of the, those people were part-timers and we used to have to start all over again. And that was the first time that we have two cars in the team, there was a lot of dynamic changing, and now, you know, we're continue to moving forward. So it's important for us to be part of this process. People understand, be patient, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to um, things start to connect and so that we can uh, show at the racetrack. Are you looking at this year as like you have to win, you have to improve on last year to be able to? to oh, stay you're always looking for improvement. The good news is uh, <laughs> we we're we're. Uh, uh, finished 18th last year on the championship. That's not the place that we want to be. However, we feel there was some uh, some areas that uh, we felt that we could have better result. But racing is is unpredictable as always. Uh, but we we only only looking forward, and we feel that we're going to have a much better season. Simon was saying yesterday that he felt like um, you and him were working closer together than ever and helping the team. I know that was yeah. the reason they. Mike Shank brought you guys in together, uh, but he said he, he felt like everything was kind of going according to plan going in this year. Can you explain? I on think that? so. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, the expectation obviously is always to do well, um, but also we, we understand the possibility of the things not going according to the plan. Uh, but I feel the plan is that you know it takes some time to to collect some of the information that we want. Our alliance with the Andrade Auto Sport also is still very very strong. They also know that they need to improve. It's not only uh, in our uh, um, organization. So it's we still keep pushing each other so that we can uh, have a better results like we had in the past or like that Andretti had in the past. So for us, remember, the Alliance, they have their own engineers, their own resource that they, they translated to us. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to a, a much better season and let's hope for the best. Go ahead, Nathan. Elio, independent of what happens with your future in 2024 beyond this year, you mentioned finishing 18th last year, which in the championship, which I know you're not used to. Um, what will you? What would you come away from this season feeling like it was a realistically successful one in terms of on track performance and championship? Finish? Look, uh, expectation for me, it's um, obviously the big one. It's Indianapolis 500. That's the one that we feel that we. We have the same car. We have all our bets on onto that. However, I'm not going to give up on the other ones either. I feel that uh, we have as much of a chance as anybody uh, in some of the places that I feel comfortable. Um, in position, if you're thinking about finishing a top 12, will be a great goal. Will be a great place to be. And um, however, we want to be able to have a podium. We want to be able to show what we can get, and we can. 
uh, IndyCar is so competitive. There are so many scenarios that you were like, I would never see that. And that's why um, we're going out there thinking that we do have a chance to, um, to repeat what we did in 2021. And um, obviously um, uh, have a better results in, in the road course, street courses as well. Mike has um, tested Tom Blomquist in the IndyCar, which I know is um, a big thing for Tom and something that he was interested in potentially pursuing. There's been some mentions that you guys could potentially swap roles where you could go run um, IMSA full-time and he could come here in IndyCar. I know you're focused on trying to keep this ride here. Does having someone who's on your team who might might Mike might look to switch things up, does that deliver you any more pressure or make things any weirder or... First of all, it's too early to say, right? Uh, but second, I, I don't want anything um, more than great things for this team. This team is uh, it's incredible. Uh, they continue to grow as much as they can. They already stamp that they're not just a small team. They stamp that they're an incredible team that uh, thinks amazing about to happen in the future. And Tom, come on, we the kid is, is a superstar. You know, he's really quick. Um, I feel that uh, he did a... He's doing an amazing job. Last year, he did a great job. This year, continue doing it. And uh, let's see. Everything have to uh, uh, happens and falls natural. And uh, But as of right now, it's still too early of the season to predict and think what's going to happen. Our goal is to have a phenomenal result for MSR so that we can uh, um, show that what this team is capable. And the last non-IndyCar question. Um, when we see a, a sporting great like Tom Brady step away from, um, can't believe it, man. The sport really? This morning, what, I, I well, wish we, I, somebody we, please we think. We, huh? th- we with him, you think, it's, right? You I, never know. So. Last year was the same thing, right? A couple years ago, yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, what? I'm upset you, actually. <laughs> when you see something like that, do you? You know, he's stepping away from the sport, um, seemingly on his own terms. If, if he actually does indeed retire, um, <laughs> do you? Uh, would you ever? whenever that time comes for you, do you want to step away on your own terms or play until uh, someone does <laughs> A great question too. Um, look, I, I just won Daytona 24 hour, man. Do you think I'm thinking retire right now? There is no, I didn't want to, there isn't a thought of that. <laughs> Good. Look, it, it also the same thing, it repeats. It has to feel natural. I, I can't force myself. I can put a number or a date, you know, that I'm going to say this is it. Um, as of right now, I am enjoying very much uh, what what I'm, am I doing. I'm about to start a great season within the car, and my mind is only thinking about that um, and start continuing working. Um, and get that result that I really wanted, that I, that I know I'm capable and I know what the team is capable. Whatever happens in the future remains to be seen. Let's go Bruce and David Mosh. Elio, you've driven for a very organized corporate type team at Team Penske for all those years. Now you're with Meyer Shank Racing and Michael Shank's like the guy next door, the buddy you'd go watch the Super Bowl with, <laughs> just a regular guy. How do you contrast what it's like being there and are you really not taking anything against team Penske, but do you feel more relaxed in this environment? Look, um, there is two different personalities, of course, and that translates to the team as well. Roger has been a corporate person for so many years that, uh, that the, everything it runs the same way. Um, and Mike is, the, as you mentioned, is a totally different person. He doesn't need to wear suit and tie to uh, to run his business right so we're humans we adapt to the environment that you are in you're trying to um, bring some of the things that you learned from the past and i learned so much from team penske which was great to have in simon as well because it was just reassuring then what do i said it before what we can do it and mike has his own way and uh, look the results start showing uh, you got to respect that and um and obviously in indycar uh, it's a very young team comparing to all those uh, those Indy cars and uh, and the ones that had victories and wins and success. But I, I do believe the 2023 is going to uh, a great turnaround for MSR. And doesn't matter how how you run, you know, if it's just a, a straight line like uh, Team Penske, or if you have some waves around the uh, around the line with with Meyer Shank Racing. But 
as long as you have the passion, which both have, Roger is passionate about racing. Mike is passionate about, and he wears in the sleeve. And um, I just think it's just different personality. Uh, Helio, uh, first of all, congratulations, obviously. Thank you, Dave. Um, Simon was saying that uh, his big problem uh, with the MSR car last year was uh, tire wear. Uh, and he said that he was also saying how sad it was that simulators have largely replaced proper track time and it's really hard uh when you have different compounds at each race yeah uh to deal with that did you, a did you find that it's the same problem for you and b how how do you resolve it yeah i think uh, one of the biggest thing that uh, probably hurt uh, us last year the change on the compound of the tires um and 2021 was a little bit different so to and even because the engineers are not from msr it's from alliance with andretti it, it takes a little time to readjust and change their mind and the philosophy um, however simon and i have been working very tough very hard uh to to look for the other side to look uh, you know in some areas that maybe wasn't visit um, but um I do believe, you know, the system works well. And yes, we, we hopefully, so we can remove those areas because now the qualifiers are so close to each other, but you see even bigger cars or teams, they're able to start like back there. But in the race uh, uh, combination, they were able to race themselves to the top. And, and because of that better combination, with special when you're talking about Iowa, you know, oof, tires wear was just incredible, and uh, and that achieved the performance. Uh, unfortunately, it pushed the performance backwards when you don't have some some sort of the things that you thinking about, and that's why you take notes now back to the drawing board and 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 fix it for this year. And that's the goal for this year to um, have those priorities to make sure that we have a better result in the race instead of so much qualifying. And are you confident that the street course, uh, street course is, is still good? I mean, you locked out the second row at Detroit last right. year. Uh, are you confident that you can make progress with the road courses without losing anything on the street? Yeah, I do. I do. That's what we need. Uh, improve on those areas uh, last year, especially for the end of the, in Laguna last race, we're able to get into finally to the top 12. We were able to get a little bit better, uh, but yellows and reds, caught up on our situation but yes i do believe in we finished even that it didn't show for you guys but um we did finish in in a high note last year and we believe that we can carry on for that to, uh, to the 2023 ageless leo um what, what are your thoughts on uh tom brady retiring i don't like it <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, someone told me, uh, comparing me and Tom Brady, um, the, this year and unfortunately no, last year, when you last year too, but, but this year, uh, I'm telling the story because of, uh, he didn't, he didn't win the, or the Super Bowl. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa don't compare me now. <laughs> I got to So now we got the Rolex, <laughs> but, um, look, you get, it's amazing. And, and in any athletes, uh, any, uh, any person that, um, achieve goals you, you even though with the experience that you have you go through some scenarios and i don't think he's hurting right now uh, i think he's pretty well and and he and that's the type of scenario the guy can retire and then come back if he wants it anytime so unfortunately it's not, not like that in our sport <laughs> we need a team we need a car but um uh yes i uh, he's he is incredible um and and also incredible was the MSR performance um, at Daytona. And I, I'm wondering, I, I apologize because I stepped out if you've already addressed this. What does that do? I, we talked about it a little bit, but now you've shifted into IndyCar mode. What does that do for you and Simon and the organization to come from that high now into your real job? This is huge. It just bring all the positive energy and attitude to everyone. We have some of the IndyCar teams at the Rolex, uh, some of the mechanics. We're so worried that the thing is, wasn't holding on that we are we're preparing ourselves as much as we could. And um, so they were able to have the taste a little bit uh, of the result. And anytime 
in, in anything, not only racing, when you have a positive vibe around you, you want to continue that going. So this is great. Um, I am super excited for uh, 2023 because um, uh, it, this team uh, not only deserves, but this team, uh, it is going to uh, another area that uh, people might think, wow, look how far they come. And it's true. They Mike is putting everything in a line and uh it will be a good year simon said yesterday he said that you and he are closer than ever you were teammates before so what has changed that has strengthened it when you're going through an organization and telling you what to do it's different you're just doing your own thing and you're competing with this person against literally you know right there now when you come into a team that asking what you need to do now i believe more minds thinking alike uh, it can in increase the possibility to find the, the solution and that's what it is uh, simon and i have been constantly talking every week to make sure that uh, whatever we need for our for the result of the team and and continue pushing to what we need uh, it's the best way to do it so yes we are super close i i really like simon uh, now we are not only Oh, I love them. Yeah, we were we we're always did very well together. I like I said, I don't have any issue with any teammate that I think. Oh, some I, I had to scuff it up and it's like, look, let's sit down together here and find out what you need. But with Simon, uh, um, Will, Joseph, um, and even Juan Pablo, that everybody knows that has a very strong personality. <laughs> I don't. I didn't have any issues. So right now, um, yeah, we are closer together because we want this team to um, to benefit from the the best result, and we know we can make help them to get to that that result. And mm -hmm. and we feel twenty twenty three is going to be great. What, what did you think, Simon and Joseph? I, I I've been hearing from you guys. I they didn't comment to anything to me. So I I i've been hearing from you some some of the background gossip so hey this is great for a show i want to have a show here yeah there's uh, a show coming there's out. a show yeah, coming yeah. out so that's what we should we should put that on the show <laughs> let's try to sneak in a, a question or two off zoom michael deforest from racing cafe michael go ahead hey thanks dave uh Elio, Elio, and uh, congrats on the three peat in uh, in daytona uh Thank well you. done with the team you first raced in IndyCar 25 years ago. No, it's going to be this 25-year anniversary. Is that right? How did, yeah, 1990. We're, we're trying to figure time. it out the year. I was like, no, I was actually joking with Scott Dixon. So he's about 20 as well. So he's not that far either. I was like, well, go ahead. 25 years ago. Dang, that's a long time. And, and how much did you see the sport change in a quarter of a century? Ooh. And how much stayed the same in, in a way? Uh, starting with the safety, IndyCar has been incredible on the racetracks with the safety walls. Um, obviously, the cars as well. We used to have like almost a thousand horsepower, and today the lap times are similar to what we have because of the t technology and the way the cars are um, designed. Also, the windshield or the aero screen, as you call it, uh, it's been huge for the safety of uh, our sport. And um, so it's it's amazing uh, what we can do with uh, uh, with all the progression over the years. So, um, the competition level is still incredible. Um, I think when you have a car that it's uh, the same for for many many years, all the tricks, all the details, they start to translate to the other teams as well, and that's why. Uh, today, if you see in a qualifying time, 10th, you probably have about five, six cars. So it is incredible. Um, there was no f favoritism, I believe. And there was always not knowing who is going to win. However, back then was already like that uh, because of uh, uh, yellows and also big props to Honda and Chevy for uh, reliability. Uh, back then, because you're pushing the limits, sometimes you used to have some unknown scenarios with the mechanical side. But yeah, uh, now it's as, as competitive as it could be. Uh, a driver can finish most of every race if he doesn't have any issues with, um, you know, uh, ending any suspension or anything, anything like that, because the, the incredible amount of uh, uh, work with the manufacturers are being outstanding. Thanks, Adio. 
You're welcome. Thanks, Michael. Uh, quickly, Ben Johnson from the Paddock Eye. Hi, Ben. Hey, Dave. Hey, Elio. Uh, welcome back for this year. Um, how much of a bonus is it for you coming back this year? Obviously, last year was kind of a building year for you guys with a new team full time. Um, what did you learn last year that you can bring forward to this year? Knowing the environment that you are in is always help uh, for the communication, um, understanding, and um, and and obviously you you fix some of the mistakes that you did, uh, whether it's strategy, whether it's uh, setup. Um, you don't go to that route again, and that helps you to. Since the cars are not changing much, I mean there were some few things with barge board and things like that, but. Uh, hopefully with the testing that we have in the next two days that will help us um, understand a little bit more. But every time you're behind the steering wheel with an Indy car and when you have a chance, it, it will, and, and especially in the place that we already been, it will, it will help tremendous. So I think this, those mistakes that we did last year, they won't happen again. Excellent. Well, congratulations for this year and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Let's work in uh, Asher Ferris. Asher's Racing Channel, you're on with the four-time MIDI winner. Thanks, Dave. So, uh, Helio, what is your um, most favorite track for this year? Like, um, what race are you most looking forward to this year? I'm looking for the Indianapolis 500 again. I'm looking for not only the crowd again, which was awesome. And, yes, I can't wait to be back at, at, uh, at Indy. And how did it feel climbing the fence at the Rolex? You know, great question because I I didn't finish this time racing in the car. So when Tom actually stopped in the track, I was like, oh, that's cool. But I wasn't even thinking that we we're going to climb the fence until uh, Mike said, are you ready? I'm like, really? You want to do this? I said, yeah, let's do this. And, and, <laughs> and when I went to climb the fence... I don't have my gloves and uh, I, I, it really hurt my hands this time. So if you notice, I was kind of like between the, the safety wall and the fence because I couldn't believe that how, how hard it was. But um, look, it was so cool to see the team doing again what we did last year. And um, yeah, that was, uh, that was perfect ending for sure. All right. Thanks, Elio. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. I think that was the worst, you right? Because <laughs> not being prepared, I didn't think it would be, I don't know, my hands, I don't know what happened, but it was the first time that, you know, when you're holding and you couldn't hold it, right. it felt like, man, this is hurting. But it was, um, but it, for me, it was great to see the, everyone repeating the same scene from last year. That was, that was emotion for sure. It could be an adrenaline thing too. You could be. The car. Plus ah, the banking, good. plus the banking. Comes no, the banking, I knew. Yeah. The banking last year, I, I, I thought it was a little tired. I was like, man, my, my knee is not going up as, as high as I wanted. But the, I think it could be that too. That you really right. Are you still able to get that high? Yeah. Look, I learned, I, many years I've started learning that if you start going too high, you know, harder, higher you can go, harder to fall, right? So you got to. You got to balance. <laughs> Sometimes I don't go down that high, not because I don't want it, but I know that the, on the way back, because when everybody's together, people don't realize the fence is not you. It's bouncing. So it, trust me, there is a technique. People don't realize it's like, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's not just climb the fence, people. It's, there is some, some things there. We'll cut you loose. We'll get you back on schedule here. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thank Appreciate you. it. We'll see you at Thermal tomorrow. Elo Castroneves, four-time Indy winner, back with Meyer Shank Racing. Up next, Scott.